Hello, hey, are you I'm, there? I'm here. Who are you? Ah, uh, this is Isaac. From the band Modest Mouse. From the band Modest Mouse. No, Isaac, sorry for fading out your song Summer there. Oh, that's all right. That's all right, it you is, know. It is a very funk high summer tune, isn't it? Yes, yeah. It was, it, was, it was designed so that anyone who wanted action, you know, like, I mean, you, you just, just put that on. And now you are instant action. And you're phoning live from Everett, Washington. Yeah, the most beautiful town in all of Washington. Where it is, uh, on a car lot, you know. Where it is very, very sunny there today. And so, for, is it sunny there today? It's damn sunny, and and the traffic is nice, you know. Like we were lounging in the traffic. You really, en- you're really enjoying that, aren't you, Isaac? Oh, it's great. We just, we just, uh, uh, you know, stopped by some fast food restaurants, plural. I, I, you know, I decided I'd go for two of them. So I got a little something to Jack in the Box here and a little something to Taco Bell, you know, to see how they, how they, you know, play against each other and play with each other. The ultimate cheeseburger from Jack in the Box, perhaps? No, no, it was some sort of um, chickeny thing and things. It, was, it, it wasn't very ultimate, though. It's crispy, spicy chicken. Well, Isaac, tell me, who else is in Modest Mouse? Who else is in Modest Mouse? Uh, oh, Eric and Jeremy. Do you want last names? Oh, sure. Names and ages uh, always helps. Okay, Eric Gr- Judy. Eric Judy is 23 years old. No, 22. Something like that. And then um, he's on the bass. And then on the drums, he got Jeremiah Green who is 20 years old, uh, 21, no, wait, oh, Vancouver, it doesn't matter, 20, 20 years old, I was going to lie in case, you know, uh, that's, you know, that's, gotta be 21 that's very bar, diplomatic yeah. of you. That's very media conscious, Isaac. And you, of course, are Isaac Brock. I, I am. No, yeah. Isaac Brock. Who won the War of 1812? One, I think, I think that the Spanish uh, won. The War of 1812 between Canada and the USA. Yeah, the Spanish won. Yeah, the war. Anything to do with it. Eight, well, yes, you did. Who really is Isaac Brock? Isaac Brock. Come on. Uh, who is Isaac Brock? Isaac Brock. Uh, Isaac Brock. Isaac Brock. Yeah, who is Isaac Brock? Oh, he's on, uh, he's on some Canadian guy. Yes, he is. I had a silver dollar. Yes, he is. Sir Isaac Brock on it. Sir Isaac Brock, your name is Isaac Brock. You play in the band Modest Mouse, but Isaac Brock was a British general who was killed in the War of 1812 in the Battle of Queenston Heights. And they still gave him a dollar. And it was the Canadians versus the Americans. Actually, the British versus the Americans. And he repulsed, Isaac Brock repulsed the American troops, but he died in the battle. Oh, man, but, you know, the Spanish still won that war. Unfortunately, there was no Spanish to be found in that area. Exactly. Maybe a a bit south there, but Isaac, what I was curious about, Isaac Brock, the Canadian general, the British general that died in the Battle of Queenston Heights, his descendants all have red hair. Do they? Do you have red hair? I grow a red beard. I've got, like, black hair. Right. You really do have some red hair on you. Yes. Your private parts, your pubic hair is red. Um, well, yeah, they, they can be kind of red, but they're mostly black, too, you know? Because Isaac Brock, Sir Isaac Brock, all his descendants have red hair, and he was also born in the Isle of Guernsey in Channel Islands in Britain. Do you have any relatives in the Isle of Guernsey, Channel Island? No, all? they're all Irish and Scottish. And some of his relatives of Isaac Brock are actually coming to Vancouver this fall for a big celebration. Am I invited? I wonder if you are. Maybe you should check that out, Isaac Brock. And you were Isaac Brock of Modest Mouse. And, of course, there also was Isaac, the bartender on the love boat. Oh, I know, I know. You haven't had any Hollywood run-ins at all. Has the, has the, has the mouse, has the Modest Mouse played Hollywood at all and run into any Isaac characters? No, no. Just a lot of tattoos. We ran into a lot of tattoo characters. It seems, Isaac, that death Death and Modest Mouse really go together. There's a bit of death link to you together, isn't there? Like death? Death and Modest Mouse. Like, I noticed that Jeremiah, and who was Jeremiah again? Yeah, uh, Jeremiah Green? Yes. He is the bass player, is he not? No, no, no. He plays the drum. Oh, he's the drummer. It was, it was listed that Jeremiah Green of Modest Mouse, we're speaking to Isaac Brock, Sir Isaac Brock of Modest Mouse, that Jeremiah liked Echo and the Bunnymen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, and the ocean rain. Now, do you realize that the drummer of Echo and the Bunnymen died in a motorcycle accident? 
Did he really? He did. The drummer of Echo and the Bunnymen died in a motorcycle accident, and um, Jeremiah also said he liked Nick Cave. Who died in a motorcycle accident? Well, not exactly. The, <laughs> the bass player of the birthday party died in a drunken car accident. Really? And Nick Cave is an alcoholic, an alcoholic, an alcoholic who almost OD'd. And you guys have a song about over-the-counter drama in the mean. Dandy, oh yeah. So there's a bit of murder and death associated with Nick Cave. There's death associated with Echo and the Bunnymen. Plus, Nick Cave wrote some books. He covered Lead Belly and Roy Orbison, surely big faves of Modest Mouse. Are you there? I'm there, I'm there. And are, are you a big Lead Belly, Roy Orbison, Blixa Bargel? I'm a big Lead Belly fan, you know? I, I, have to, I have to be kind of drunk to be into Roy Orbison, you know? And, c and continuing on with Death and Modest Mouse, I mean, continuing on this, driving is really death-defying. Like, the highways are really death-defying. Roadkill, etc. What are you guys thinking when you're driving this time on your way up to Vancouver here? What's, what's on your mind? What are you thinking about? Our roadkill count's real low, and it's kind of bumming us out, you know? Like, if we get, if we get back to America one way, you know, on our way over the border again, and people are asking us, what's your, what's your count? They're going to be, I don't know, they might just send us the fuck back up. Because we have to get at least 20, you know, 20 animals that weigh over 25 pounds. And it's not, it's, it's not been easy, you know. Usually you have to do the back roads to get that. What do you think about when you're in the van with the rest of the guys? Like, I was talking to the guy Mike from the band Godhead Silo. Is that, the, that's, that's what you pronounce the name, isn't it? Yeah. Godhead Silo. And he was saying that he's known his bandmate so long, or his one bandmate so long, since he was like 12, they have nothing more to talk about. Have you run out of stories to talk about? No, no, we, we've got the perfect recipe, which is you talk about really stupid shit that you couldn't get away with talking about anywhere else on the planet, and you, you just keep killing the joke over and over again. Yeah, that, that's what we do. How about the, in the van? Do you ever, like, fall asleep in the van? or, the, or the, What are you driving? What are you, an Econoline? What are you well, guys... we, we were driving this big-ass... Uh, Ram van? Tradesman van, but the engine blew up in it, and so now we're in, the, we're in some little truck right today. The, the tradesman vans are amazing. Well, they, they, yeah, they are if the temperature gauge doesn't get fucked up and the radiator decides. I put a new engine in our last van, and three weeks later, because the radiator wasn't moving no water, the temperature gauge wasn't showing any, you know, thing it overheated through rod in the van uh, down in California. Yeah. Isaac of Modest Mouse, do you ever fall asleep in the van or, you know, in your car or you, whatever, and like with your hand over your face and then get wrinkles on your face because you fall asleep in a weird position? Because it was that guy from that English band and in, in England that he like fell asleep and like he fell asleep with his legs cross-legged and then he couldn't walk because he fell asleep. Have you ever had any wrinkles on your face from sleeping? No, just lots of drool marks on like my shirt or something, you know. Isaac of the band Modest Mouse, what does this song bring back memories to you? you of this song right here Isaac Brock of yeah. Modest Mouse, are you hearing that? Yeah, it reminds me of wood panel cars. Well, you're kind of going back there to the 60s. Now this, you were talking about murder. We were talking about murder, the bass player of the birthday party dying. We're talking about the guy from Echo and the Bunnymen, the drummer dying. And now we're talking about murder, murder. You have a connection to this. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Murder. We got, we got someone, uh, someone playing music here who murdered someone. No, the... This ain't no Red Belly. Who murdered some people? No, let's just say the guy that wrote this song's name is Don. Don. Don King. He has been accused of murder. No, not Don King, Isaac Brock. But this guy, is, this guy's son, I think, plays in a band. I'm guessing this guy's son plays in a band. This is a 1960s Seattle band, and I think a guy's son... Is this The Ventures? No, the guy's son... Oh, have you met the son of The Ventures? Yeah, he used to come into the Gullivers all the time. He was, that was his only claim to fame, or actually only claim to life, really. 
and said, is his dad played in the Ventures? No, this is another guy from a Northwest band, and I think you played the with... Sonics? No, not the Sonics, and I think you played with his son. I think his son played with you, and his son plays in a band with the word murder in it. Murder City Devils? Yes, is that... Could it be? Because this guy's... This name of the band is Dawn in the Good Times, led by Don Galusi, and you played with Dan Galusi. You know, uh, Dan Galusi, I think, has no relation to Don Galusi. Wait, I think he does. Because do you really... If he... I mean... If, I mean... D- d- I mean, Dawn in the Good Times. I think he might actually have some hookup with this. Because the Murder City Devils, who is, who, well, I mean, for the listeners that are wondering what's going on here, who are you again? Who are you? Who am I? You are. I'm Isaac Brock from Modest Mice. From Modest Mouse. Now, what is the connection between Modest Mouse, Modest Mice, and the Murder City Devils? Um, just friends now. Got one member in the Murder City Devils who played guitar for us for quite a while. Yeah, Dan Galusi and, and this guy's dad, we think, I'm thinking Don Galusi is like from Dawn in the Good Times. This is the guy that produced the Stooges. Probably an fun- uncle. Because, really, have you, did you, you never heard any rumors on that? Yeah, well, you know, I think I have now that you mention it, but then I could, I could be fabricating in my mind because I want that, want that to be true. Because wouldn't this be amazing? Because this guy, if this is true, if it's his uncle, he produced the Stooges Funhouse. And he's active in real estate today and into the Christian ministry. But this is from Dawn in the Good Times. Wait a second. Okay, Dawn in the Good Times. This guy now lives somewhere like Detroit or something, doesn't he? I'm not sure if he does. Why? Does, does, does Dan yeah, have a... because one of the last times we went on tour with Dan... He really wanted to go find this Don Galucci guy who produced the Stooges. Now, I don't know whether he, I don't remember whether he said he had any relation or not, but he was obsessed with going and finding this Don Galucci guy. I think that's fascinating. You've got to get produced by him. And you know what's even wilder is a lot of Don in the Good Times also recorded at Kearney Barton Audio just up the street from Egg Studios in Seattle, Washington. You could actually get to record at the same studio that Don in the Good Times were at. Really? And you could have him produce you. What do you think about that? Awesome. And may, like maybe they could play the instruments? And, well, no, you know, Kearney Barton Audio is right near Egg Studio. It's where the Sonics recorded as well. It's very primitive garage sounding. In fact, many uh, release from P.O. Box 986 Issaquah, Washington are from there. The record label based out of P.O. Box 986. Are you talking, um, you're talking that Puget Power? Regal Select record Regal label. Regal Select, right. The Regal Select home of the Fallouts, Puget Power, the Night Kings and Gorilla. Do you know anything about Regal Select at all? No, we, we have been for years, us and Issaquah, trying to figure out who the hell runs that label and why we can't find them. Well, Isaac Brock, we might have some answers for you today. Awesome. The guy who runs the label's name is Mike Goodall. Mike Goodall. G-O-O-D. A-L-L. Mike Goodall ran the Regal Select label. And of course, listeners are wondering, who cares about Issaquah? Well, that's where Modest Mouse are from. That's your home base. That's, that's where we live. And this Mike Goodall's claim to fame is that he won the Bongathon. He won the Bongathon. It's like one of those things where, like, those giant pipes where you inhale all that hemp, and you have fun, and you kind of in- inhale it, and you get hallucinogenics. Oh, the Bonathon, like on the Public Access show. Yeah. He won that. Yeah, what is, what is the, explain a game, Isaac, of, of Modest Mouse. Okay, well, you got yourself this television program, you know, Public Access, and there's this fat guy in a tie-dye shirt, um... Who sits there on the phone and has people call up, and he may, times how long their bong hit is. And believe me, you can try and fake, you can try and pass it around the room and, like, make him think that you're just keeping going. But he can tell the difference. He can hear that subtle theme from thing to thing, you know, from passing the bong from one person to another. He can tell and whatnot. And whoever has the longest bong hit wins the bong a for that day. And the guy that won was Mike Goodall. On what... what Wonder what day. I'm not sure, but it was Mike Goodall, and he's the guy that runs Regal Select Records, so maybe you can look him up in the phone book. I will, I will. Mike Goodall, G-O-O-D-A-L-L, and he won the Bongathon, so maybe the Bongathon guy will know something about him. See, I could trap that guy. I could trap him by saying we have his prize. He'd have to come to my house and pick up his prize for winning the Bongathon. Now, when you, you've been to Vancouver before a few times. You played the Starfish Room. How did that go? Because you played with Canadian legends, the Super French and Thrush Hermit. You know, a lot of hype on those guys. What do you know about Canadian rock? How did you feel Modest Mouse fed in? Fit in with that? Um, I, I, I don't I don't know that we do or what. I, I you know I know the Smugglers. And I know your band, the Evaporators, and I know this band, Cub. 
And then there's, you know, I don't know much about, I didn't know jack shit about the Super Friends or uh, Thrush Hermit. How did you enjoy that gig? You were late getting there. How did you enjoy it? Um, I, the drunker I got, the more I liked it. But um, I remember thinking, uh, God, what is that band? The, the, it was either the Super Friends or, the, I think it might have been Thrush Hermit. The ones who had the big rock and roll sign and they were all doing the 70s glam thing. Probably them. Yeah, I, was, uh, I don't know. I didn't dig the shtick. Did you also play at the Magic Theater in Vancouver? Um, were, were you, no, I don't think we did. I think we were maybe gonna, but didn't. A Canadian reviewer noting Modest Mouse of your recent performance at Yo-Yo said was that you guys are moving from a, like a cute k- skater boy persona to the tougher angst-ridden image. What do you think about that, Isaac? Oh, uh-huh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, didn't know we had, a, had the first image, you know, so I didn't know we were moving on to a new one. But what happened at Yo-Yo? Was it a tougher set that you put in there, a tougher angst-ridden set there at Yo-Yo? No, there's no no angst. But did you, well, how did you feel you played when you played that night? Was it the same? Had you played that way before? We were trying to make rock guitar disco, but apparently it's not working out. Were, um, you, were you doing that for Calvin? No, 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 no. Because would Calvin really rather be producing rap? He seems to love rap and the funk, you know? And we played a snippet of that song, Summer, when you recorded with Calvin. Would he rather be doing rap? Would I rather be, or would he? Would he rather be producing rap, you I know? I would rather be recording a Jamaican dub band. So he, he's not as much in... Or like, what's the technical setup of dub narcotic like? Um, it, it's pretty basic, you know? You got yourself the 8-track, and um, then some mics, no, and... Uh, nothing too vintage and exciting? Oh, he's got lots of weird vintage shit. He's got himself this old uh, control panel for, you know, school, whatever they call that, the intercom system and things, and he put stuff through there, records through the intercom system, and... Basically, anything sounds good to him, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. What's wrong with Money Mark? Come on, Money Mark is not a faker. He is music... What are you talking about? His music is real. Money He's Mark... fraud. But no, his music is real. His music is real, Isaac. Like, the mu- he can't fake the playing. He is playing. I don't know. I, I, like, we, we played a couple shows with him, right? And he was faking it that night. I don't know who the hell he does his studio shit. Because that's totally listenable, you know? But live, it, it, was, it was just goddamn ridiculous. It was like bad stand-up comedy mixed with just quirky, stupid shit. Like, uh, he'd bring out this Casio little keyboard, and he'd be like, Okay, this is for, this is for Philadelphia only. Yeah, Philadelphia. This is a special song. And then he'd just press down the buttons and start smashing the Casio and throw it out. And then he did the same thing another night. This is the DC only. Same, you know, fucking must have bought him by in bulk at Costco or something, all these Casios. I don't need to dog the guy, whatever. So you, whatever he does is what he does. I, so you don't believe the, the music, it didn't, didn't translate then to the live setting for you? I just think that uh, there's people who, could do, who do do better at playing keyboards, especially playing like that old 70s sounding, you know, whatever you call it, TV theme sound. Are shakers important? Are shakers important in recording? You know, the shakers, having shakers. Do you like shakers, Isaac? What are shakers? You know, shakers. Like, you know, shakers. Like, you Maracas? Know, Maracas. Shakers, you know. No, no. Why, do you, do you got some? No, I'm just wondering, are you into shakers? I thought I heard some shakers on your recordings. Oh. You know, a bit of shakers, yeah, Maracas. shakers are cool. You know? What about, what about falsetto? Is that important? Because I noticed Modest Mouse, you have like, Have I told you? Have I told you? Oh, yeah, falsetto's yeah. hell important. How much falsetto do you use? Like, do you restrict it in the amount of songs you use because you're afraid to overdo it? Like, how much falsetto is there? I don't know. I don't, I don't think you can overdo it because, like, I in print. Pure, just albums and non-stop falsetto. Love them. Uh, approximately how many Modest Mouse songs have to, Have I told you? Well, that only... Not w- enough, probably, you know? How do the crowds react to the Modest Mouse slow tunes? Like when you play a slow tune. I mean, how do the kids dance to that? You know, like the ionization of the Adamsies. You know, like the slow tune. How do they dance? They, they don't really, actually. Like, usually they stand there with their arms crossed and just stare and wait for it to end and something, you know. Something so they can get busy to happen and things. But I think, I think young ladies really like the slower songs, you know. But you ever get scared playing a so slow song that maybe, you know, you know, it's not, you know, it's slow, you know? It's well, like, they're a bit more uncomfortable, for sure. Like, you look at the crowd, the crowd's got the groove, they're grooving the summer, and then you kick into kind of like a slow one, and you see the momentum go, or is that kind of fun to do that to the crowd? Oh, uh, it's, it, it's, it's fun, actually. I, usually, I hate to say I don't really notice usually what's going on with the crowd unless it's crazy, you know? So I don't notice too much what's going on with the slow songs, except for that a lot of the times, you know, 
depending on how much the bar waters down their beer, if, if they don't water it down much, we get a lot of heckling during slow songs. It seems also, Isaac of Modest Mouse, that a lot of your songs explode, too. Like, Tundra Desert explodes, doesn't it? Yeah, like, it begins it slow, it's like, it tricks you, and then it gets going. It starts off all slow, like... Yeah, and then people heckle at the beginning who don't know what's going on with that one, like, We want to rock! Come on! You know, the frat guys or whatever. However, the, I don't know how they find out what's going, where to go, but... And you were Isaac of Modest Mouse, also in the band is Jeremy, Jeremiah, sorry. Jeremiah. Jeremiah and Eric. And also your manager, Steve. Is he your manager, Steve? <laughs> no. no, that was kind of that was kind of a joke. Oh, I felt for it. I thought that was so cool that, like, your manager plays slide guitar. Yeah. Like, your manager. Like, your manager contributes. That's so he excellent. He was actually our engineer and recorded our shit. And then he wanted to be our manager, and it didn't, you know. I just figured make the guy happy. It doesn't. You know, that doesn't mean shit to me. Sure, knock yourself out. Manage away. But then he actually was. And he was trying to pimp us out. And I don't I don't want to get pimped out to no one. I'm fine where I'm at. Who the hell is S. Duda? Who is S. Duda? Steve Duda? Yeah, like, why S. Duda? What is, what is, what is S. Duda like? This S. Duda. Uh, Steve's a pretty cool guy. I like Steve a lot. He's a Steve, too. Because he did that big article you in the rocket. It's like, I always see, like, does, does, does he like rap? Does he like rap? I think he writes a bit about rap. Doesn't he too? I, I think so. I think I, yeah. And he was—he was definitely—he was. He was it sounded like he was dogging us in a fun way, you know. Because I, we're all short, pot belly, talking too much, sunken chested, lacking in stature characters, you know. When you go to a photo shoot, Isaac, do you actually pick the clothes you're gonna wear, or do you just like show up at it? We don't really go to photo shoots. Well, like there's some promo pics that have uh, uh, taken of you. Like, yeah, the way back when that thing with Charles. Like one of them, you're wearing like a belt. Is that you wearing the belt? Like yeah, you're wearing, yeah, and yeah you I was wearing the, the belt. Like the sh- I, I figured you showed up in a t-shirt and then you put a, did, did the did the guy to the right of you? I don't know who that is. There was one guy wearing a jacket, right? Who's the guy wearing the jacket? Oh shit, I think that might have been Jeremy. Is that his? Own own jacket, or did he put that on for the photo oh, shoot? Oh, we, we, yeah, actually, we came in all them clothes. It looked things. like we a, were just feeling fancy that day, you know. It looked like it was his jacket. It really did look like it was his jacket. And we're speaking here to Sir Isaac Brock of the band Modest Mouse, winding up here with Modest Mouse. And Isaac, did you ever go to Machismo Mouse? It was that restaurant on Capitol I, Hill. I got a job at Machismo Mouse for one hour. You worked at Machismo Mouse? For one hour before I decided that maybe I should just leave. But it was like, it was, it seemed like it was a good place. It was called like fast food that was good for you. Yeah, but it tasted like shit. But it was lo-fi mexy stuff and it is Machismo Mouse. It was really, that's why it went under, you think? The shitness? I think the shitness had a lot to do with why it went under because it was really just not good tasting, you know? And you shit me not. You really had a job at Machismo I Mouse. I had a job for one whole hour at Machismo Mouse. I guess you wouldn't be so ashamed if they tore down the Ballard Firehouse, eh? Because you kind of took a beating there, it appears, didn't it? There was some incident you had that sounded pretty tough at the Ballard Firehouse. Some beaten thing. Is that true when you, got beaten, up, when you got beaten up outside the Ballard Firehouse? I've never heard nothing about that. You know, that. you were driving with your girlfriend or something like that. Oh, that was, that was in Ballard. That was, yeah, that was odd. That was some guy who was beating up his girlfriend, and I got out and... Got in a fight with him. My girlfriend saved my ass. She totally, like, he was clocking me so fast I couldn't even think. And I stepped out of the way just in time to see her floor him with a super good punch. He was one of those big-necked guys, you know, like, just huge. And you were trying to rescue somebody, weren't you? Yeah, good-hearted he Isaac he Brock. He his girlfriend and ripped her shirt off and shit. And I was just going kind of haywire, so I jumped out of our van and was like, what the, f- I guess I can't, well, start, get the beep button going. And I just was like, started yelling at a mass, and he was startled for maybe a grand total of 15 seconds until he realized that I wasn't that big. And, you, um, you jumped out of your car with your flowing red locks in the true I Isaac got Brock. Red locks, I got black locks. Well, the redness of the Sir Isaac Brock Queenston oh, yeah. Heights. You know, you you know, you repulsed the Americans. You repulsed Americans, so you're good at fighting other Americans. Awesome. Do you ever hang out at the Sub Pop offices? Yeah. Have you ever run into Eddie Vedder? No, no, never ran into that guy. Has he ever checked you guys out at all? I don't, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. What about the Foo Fighters? Why did they kick that guy out? Surely you must have some sunny day real estate stories to relate. Well, I, I guess I could, but I feel kind of weird talking about that. That's someone else's gig, and I'm just, See, oh shit, who cares? It seemed- I guess they just went in and, you know, like according to that William guy, went in and basically 
recorded over all his drum tracks, you know, or a mass of them, and then, because they weren't on time or something, and then they went in to the computer. Basically what happened was Geffen Company said, people really want to be hearing you on uh, on the drums there. Dave, uh, they, they just, that's what they want to hear. It's Dave Grohl from Nirvana, the drummer from Nirvana, playing the drums on, you know? And so, I don't know, he bought it and kind of kind of hosed some guy. Like, it's, a, I don't know, it's someone else's attention. I don't need to think about that shit. Whatever they got going on is their own deal. But you have partied at some super electro parties, haven't you? Weren't you once drunk at a super electro 4th of July party? <laughs> how did you find out about that? Well, how did, how do you, how did you get into the super electro party? Well, it wasn't a super electro party. You were just, uninvited. Steve was having a party. And Steve of Mud Honey was having a party and you were uninvited and drunk. I was, well, I was, I was, uh, 18 and... Me and my friend were kicking around. We we were just walking around on the Fourth of July, getting drunk and drunker. And then we ran into some other friend who was headed there, and he just was like, "Yeah, we want to go." So we went with him and things. And then it was like a whole it was this big circle of people just leaning over and kissing each other's butt in the circle. And then trying to kiss their own butt. Uh, I don't know. It was it was pretty goofy, pretty goofy event. It seemed. You know, that's what it seemed to me at that point when I was drunk. Now I just see it as a bunch of, you know, old folks hanging out, talking about what they've been up to at the office, you know? Well, Sir Isaac Brock left his mark. He was uninvited and drunk at the Super Electro 4th of July party. You have some fans in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. There were these fans of yours, and it's hard to relate this, Isaac, but every time I see them, they want me to give them a plastic bag. There's this guy that loves your band, and every time I see him, he's like, give me a plastic bag. He just wants me to give him a plastic bag. Why? I don't know. It's his thing. Like, what? I don't know. And I give him a plastic bag. Like, could you bring a plastic bag to me the next time I see one. I, I bring him a plastic bag. So that is the mindset of a Modest Mouse fan. I thought that was really amazing. But he said, you got to talk to Modest Mouse. And I'm happy I did because we were able to find out all about if perhaps Don Galushi really is related to Dan Galushi and maybe you can do some recordings there. And right now we're going to cut into Sir Isaac Brock uh, track five, Lounge. This, what can you say to the listeners about the song Lounge at all? Oh, it's, it's a sleazy song. That's that's about that's about it. It's a uh, you know. No, am I? There's a sequel to it on the new album, and it's coming out. It's the new lounge. It's about so, and he's going out with a cinematographer who actually is a pornographer. Yada yada yada. What was it for me to like the song Lounge? What does that say about me if I like the song Long- Lounge? Is that the sellout song? Uh, no, that means you're a Casanova. It means you're a Casanova there. Oh, wait, well, thanks very much. So keep on rocking the free world, and why should people care about Modest Mouse? Why should people care? Oh, shit, that's not for me to say. I don't know, you know? Okay, well, keep on rocking the free world, and do do the loot do 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 No, Isaac Brock of the band Modest Mouse. do do the loot do